Hello, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com and today it's a beautiful fall morning and I'm going to do a continuation of my uh, fall gardening series. I'm going to take apart this cucumber garden, so stay with me. Well, hello, I'm here by the sea. Good morning, it's April 3rd here in uh, beautiful spring Nova Scotia and then today I'm going to find some squash in my tulip garden. Hi, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. I'm going to talk about garlic. So, uh, yeah, there's still cucumbers on this garden. Yeah, it's still, it's still producing cucumbers, but uh, they're, they don't taste good anymore. Uh, they're, it's not producing them at the rate it was before. Uh, you know, if you're growing pickling cucumbers, and this, um, this, all this whole garden here, this four by ten pickle garden, was pickling cucumbers. Um, they don't keep very well, so you need to be able to harvest enough to make a batch of pickles. Uh, so you have to, if you're going to plant them, plant a lot, because it's not like you can pick two on Monday and then pick a couple more on Tuesday, and then by Friday you've got enough to make pickles. The, the ones you picked on Monday will be kind of uh, lousy. Uh, you want to pick them fresh and you get them. Uh, pickled fresh. Um, so anyway, uh, it's not producing at a rate where I could pickle them. And, and not only that, but just the flavor, uh, because the plants are pretty much done, the flavor isn't there anymore. So it's, there's no point in waiting. Um, might as well, I guess, there's a spare time today, so might as well get this done. I want to show you how uh, easy this is to take apart and to get ready for next year. When I'm done this morning, I won't do anything till next year when I plant. That's all I need to do. So let's, uh, no further ado, let's get at it. Alright, so all I'm going to use to take this apart and get it ready for next year is a knife and a pitchfork. These trellises were made with just uh, trees from the uh, forest and jute twine, which is like a hemp or I don't know what material it is, but it's a natural material. So the reason I use that twine is that it's um oh it smokes I see oh I really drove those stinks in and the reason I use the jute twine is because it's biodegradable and it's very easy to cut it's strong enough to hold the plants up as you can see um, but it uh, it's weak enough that you can cut it very easily and uh, you don't have to worry about putting it away or anything like that. It'll just uh, break down and rot. Now a couple of these cucumbers, remember these are pickling cucumbers so they're only supposed to be about four inches. But a lot of the couple of them get get enormous like this, because <laughs> I figured I, these are open pollinated uh, varieties, so you can save the seeds. So I'll grab a couple of those utter monsters. <laughs> you wouldn't think that was a cucumber, but that's how they get if you leave them alone. Uh, pretty big. Anyway, those are for seeds. There's one more big one. Because, yeah, that's the other thing about even the few pickles, even the few pickles that are growing right now, um, they're all misshapen and, and they have a bitter taste. So that's, that's the right size for pickling, about four fingers, you know, wide. But uh, it's got this, it's, just, it's not sweet anymore. So there's no point in waiting, right? I got plenty of things to do. Might as well just get this over with. So all these pickles that don't taste good, I'm just going to bury them. I'm going to make a hole in the garden and bury them. That's the easiest way to deal with it. I don't, think, I don't even need a wheelbarrow. And there's a lot. A lot of big, 
neglected pickles here. Anyway, just to give you a sense of how easy it is to put a garden like this away. There's also a ridiculous amount of dill and dill seed in this garden. And uh, I'm going to spread broadcast, I'm going to cut off a few of these heads and just broadcast this dill seed around different garden beds where I want it to grow next year. And it's been my experience when you do that, it just comes up. So I always plant a couple dill rows on purpose in the spring, but I also, most of my dill is just wild dill that seems to come up on its own. It's not a big deal to do that when you've got thousands of seeds. No doubt this garden will have a ridiculous amount of dill in it next year too. But there, that's that's a lot of seeds, right? I'll just put that with my cucumbers. I continue to go about dismantling this trellis. Uh, this trellis took me about five minutes to make. It cost me. One dollar of dollar store jute twine. So I think it's kind of ridiculous what people, the lengths people go to to build uh, trellises. It really doesn't have to be uh, an expensive or complicated uh, enterprise. Because all you need is some kind of stick. Oh. These are just little, these are spruce trees from my property. That's all they are. They're just sticks. And you take one of these and skin it, it'll last about five years. Then you just burn it in a campfire and cook hot dogs over it. This is actually a radish from last year. Sorry for this wind. Man, the wind is a problem here. I can pull all these out. That's done. It's more of this dill weed here. It is a weed. <laughs> it's a lot of dill. These remaining dill plants, just going to pull them out. I don't want to have an insane amount of dill. Uh, growing in this garden next year. I'll just fire them off in the woods. Great thing about having a woods, you can fire things in it. It's all biodegradable. The other thing that this dill, uh, I'll, I'll, I will always plant dill with cucumbers because the cucumbers climb the dill as well. So the dill grows, if you plant the dill months earlier than the cucumbers and uh, so it's got a good head start um, so when you actually plant the cucumbers uh, you'll climb it. it just helps them find their way to the, to the trellis I think I got the most of it here. It's like a really humid day here. All right, so now, take these vines and just move them aside a little bit. Change the camera angle so you can see what I'm doing here. So take these vines and move them all aside.
right. There's a handful of weeds here, not too many really. Relatively weed free garden, it was just mulched with uh, 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 hay, that's it. Just mulched with hay, relatively weed free. Yeah. I'm just going to dig a hole and bury all that stuff. So I got my little ditch dug there. Now I can just take this stuff and throw it in. Throw well, about one third in. I'm just composting here, right? Oh, lost my shoe. <laughs> Just composting here. Here, Get that nice little smush. All right, now I can put the dirt back. Round it up a little bit where you made the hole. It should even out over the course of the winter with the snow and the rain and the weight of all that. Should push it back down to level. Woo. All right, so that part's ready. I'm going to do the rest of the part of the garden and then uh, the other part, the back part of the garden, and then I'll uh, catch up with you in a few minutes. I right, just I'm just about done here on this end, uh, pulling everything out. I just thought I'd show very quickly. Um, give people a sense of what it's like having a no-till garden. Uh, so this soil has not been, I built this garden in 2013. It's never been tilled. And here's some grass and you can tell it's been growing all summer long and it comes out like that. Right? I'm not selling anything, I'm not making any money off of this. Look, this comes out. Effortless, right? Think about how hard it is to pull grass out normally in a garden. Right? It gets really in there. This, this just comes out, no problem. Almost like it wasn't even in there. Uh, everything just pulls out so easily. A couple more over here, effortlessly. There, we did. Literally, the weeds in this garden took me about a minute to pull in a four by 10 space, that's nothing. All right, so now I'm gonna dig a trench here and, uh, and then fill, up, uh, fill it up with the weeds. So I'm digging my trench here and I noticed something else that was worth mentioning. You know, everywhere here, there's worms. Worms, worms, worms. Right, anywhere I put my hand in. One, two, three, four. One handful of dirt, four worms. Another handful of dirt, a couple worms in there. So on and so forth. They're kind of running away. I didn't get the jump start on. Anyway, there's, there's tons of worms in here. And that's why you don't need tilling. The worms are doing that. What do you think they're 
they're doing in here, they're tunneling. And all that tunneling is loosening up, aerating the soil. And there's lots of other living things. I, I, everywhere I look at the soil here, it's moving. It's just full of life. Because I've created an environment that's favorable to the living organisms that uh, live in the soil. Which, and they in turn, as the, to reward me for that or thank me for that, um, they just improve the soil. All this soil was is the existing clay, really, really poor clay soil that existed here. Uh, horse manure I put down and just added mulches and other applications of manure to amend. Uh, but I don't think I've... I, I put some chicken manure on this last year. And that's all it's going to need. I'm just going to mulch it this year. I think it'll be fine for next year. All right, so I'm going to finish digging this hole here. Try not to hurt the worms. Okay, so now that's all done. Now that all remains, that took about three minutes to dig that hole and put that in there, based on the camera timer anyway. So, I keep mentioning time, how, to, how long things take, because the main thing I hear people who uh, are reluctant to get into gardening talk about is, oh, I don't have the time, I don't have the time. So, uh, I always mention how long everything takes, because, uh, It makes the case that it's really not that time consuming. Uh, dealing with this bed today is about the same amount of time it takes to do a short workout. All in, like to get dressed, to walk down to the garden, to get the hay, all that stuff. Half an hour total. I could probably do this in less if I wasn't filming it. Let's put this hay down. We'll grab a little bit more. Hang on a second here. All right, throw this on. All right. So there, we're done. Uh, gardening is not hard, but it is exercise, as you can tell. I'm, I'm in a complete lather here. Uh, put a good layer of hay on. Yes, there's some seeds in the hay. You don't worry about that. You'll get a couple weeds, but they'll pull out so easily you won't care. When you got a really good, you know, really good soil that's really well developed with a lot of things in it, it'll be so loose. It's not a problem. Uh, all of this hay will feed the soil, feed the organisms in the soil. It will also protect the worms from the from the birds and stuff like that. You know, when you turn out soil over like this, if I walk away, there'll be 20 robins here in no time to pick up all the worms. So, you know, some people might say. Well, gee, that's not no-till garden. You turn the soil over. Yes, I did, but you don't have to think about it like that. It's not a set of rules and dogma you have to follow. If you think about it another way, I dug up the earth, I put some um, organic matter in there, and I covered it up. That's a hugaculture bed, right? Which is also permaculture. So I'm, I probably will not dig it up and bury stuff next year, and I didn't do that the year before. The previous year, uh, what did I grow here? Yeah. I grew uh, parsnips here. So all I did was pull the parsnips out of the ground and pull whatever weeds and I covered the, the thing with hay in the fall. So, and next year I'll probably grow something else that it's not gonna have that kind of mass. And yeah, I could have taken the, the leaves and the vines and put them in my compost pile and dealt with that, but this just seemed like a, a waste of time. This is so much quicker. That's gonna feed the soil, that's gonna rot. I'm putting the worm food in the garden where the worms are, and I'm also covering the garden with what will become worm food. So for me, that makes sense. It's quick, it's easy. That garden bed's done. I don't have to worry about it until next year when I put seeds in the ground. So I hope this was useful. I hope you found this uh, content uh, useful. Um, if you enjoyed it, uh, like us on Facebook, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and check out the podcast, MeritonGardening.com. Flies around. Um, until next time, uh, 
get out there and get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.